Hey y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. And, and this, this is, is the, the fake, fake ass book club. <laughs> Wait, can we both say or no? Well, welcome back, you guys. It's your girl Moni. And this is Kat. Hey Kat. Hey Moni. What's up? Y'all, it's been giggly. I know. It's got the giggles. A, it's been a lazy Sunday. Like, well, not really lazy. Mm, I'm sorry. We got that's, up early. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's never that. Mm -mm. Mm. I haven't had one of those in a while, but it maybe wasn't as hardcore as the rest of this weekend's been. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. It was light work um, compared to everything else, but we're back. You know, we are here for another fun episode. Um, this week, you guys, we're blessing you with another fun fake ass episode because we can do what we want. Okay. Yes. Yes, <laughs> and, yes you um, can. We're here for it. So I think before we kind of get into our episode, friend, let's let's dedicate it like we know we should. So Ooh. hands off your hearts, everyone. <sighs> Thank you so much to our patrons. You guys are the best. We appreciate your continued support. Um and you know what? I'm going to dedicate this to my son. His birthday is actually tomorrow, but I've been celebrating him all weekends. I love him dearly. I feel like, man, he really, he he unshackled my heart, okay? he. I feel like in a lot of ways, he's my first love. And so just shout out to him, man. He is the best little guy. He's and a so perfect beam of light. He, I mean, that's what defrosted your heart because it, it was, he's just too warm. I thought it was impenetrable, but it <laughs> turns out it's not. And um, yeah, just so shout out to him. He turned 12. Like, what a vibe. What about you, friend? Well, definitely yes. And that, because man, what a great guy. I mean, just good. and good work. Thank you. You know, you, 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 you guys did that. My dedication this week is going out to the distinguished gentlewoman, Jasmine Crockett, an who applause, really, oh, oh yeah, right there, yes. Um, who really gathered um, Madge Taj Gadge um, oh, in Congress. Um, she's a deeply unpleasant person, and I think she likes to think of herself as something of a bully, and what she won't be doing is trying that again on Miss Jasmine. Crockett, if you missed it, uh, Jasmine, um, they were just, I don't even know what they were discussing in Congress, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene tried to come for her eyelash, um, Miss Crockett's eyelashes, and Jasmine was kind of like, oh no, you did not. I think everybody's familiar now with the phrase, uh, ble bleach blonde, bad built, butch body. <laughs> and the only thing she didn't say was bitch. bitch. <laughs> It was implied. <laughs> it was implied. It was great. It was very heavy. We've been talking about it. Uh, school cafeteria energy. Oh, yeah. Um, I love it. Just uh, one more applause. Strange. One more applause. It was just, it was a beautiful moment and shut her right on down. So, and then also a side dedication to Bell Hooks, who every time, I haven't read all of her work. I spaced it out a little bit because it's so precious and good to me, but I'll, I'll get into later why this is for Bell Hooks, especially her book, Talking Back. Ooh. Dedication over. I like that. But I noticed we do that. Like, that's what this whole podcast is, is us talking back, talking back to the culture. Yeah, man. And I think that's a good message for women, too, though, because sometimes we don't. We, we are should. very much conditioned not to <clears throat> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and very directly punished for it. Yeah, we are. It's, yeah. It's we can crazy. make more money if we were like Candace Owens. Do you want to sell out? We could sell out. I mean, what are we talking here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's like we're going to put a pin in selling we'll out. In yeah, we'll put a pin in selling out. Um, but I just thought, you know, it is. we're going to do a fake ass episode. I did just want to kind of go over our weekend a little bit. Um, if you don't know. Sure. You know, yeah, just, let uh, the people know what we've been up to. Well, so because last time I dedicated, speaking of dedications, our episode to my friend Nick and her daughter Cache. Yes. Cache just graduated from the illustrious Spelman University, um, which I was told over this past week, the weekend before, is the top HBCU and has been for the last 17 years. So shout out to Spelman for doing that. But um, I just wanted to share my experience because it was so good. So we, we drove down and um, we went into the convention center, one of the convention centers down in Atlanta. And just seeing so many beautiful black people there, um, it made me think about the fact that this particular group of kids didn't get a chance to celebrate, you know, their, mm -hmm. which we might have touched school. on that, their high school. It was COVID and all that stuff. A lot of them didn't have prom. So it just felt really, really special to have um, an opportunity to um, 
just just celebrate that group of uh, kids. And so the fact that it was my best friend since I was nine, her beautiful, smart, talented, kind-hearted. I mean, I love her so hard. It was just so it was it was emotional, and I did cry once. Can you imagine? I thought about you because I was like, man. <laughs> I cried more than once. Damn it. <laughs> I was yeah, really trying to keep it together. But it sometimes happens. You can't. That's that's what I love oh, about crying. It's so involuntary. That's what I hate about it. <laughs> you crazy. have to get it out, though. You're, uh, it's the, it's your, the feelings demand to be felt. It did. Right. And so um, Angela Bassett was the keynote speaker. Shut the front door. When I thought I, it was going to be Kalanji Brown. Kentaji Brown. Sorry. She was there. Oh, okay. She's like, she wasn't okay. Let me blow this you away. Stacked. Let I'm me blow sorry. you away. That's I'm why. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Angela V. Bassett came on out looking like a beautiful angel. She from never heaven. let her arms go. She never let anything go. She looked amazing. Her speech was so heartfelt, so beautiful. In fact, I have a TikTok clip of the, you know, she's kind of closing this, her part of the speech. And then they, I'm going to send it to you so you can put it up right now so you can see my beautiful cachet. Okay. Like, she's speaking, and then her face is right there. I was like, oh, my God. This is, you went into overload. I, uh, <laughs> I almost is... died. I, and I, I, to the point where I was imagining myself at one of my kids' graduation, and I had to stop thinking about it because I'm like, oh, God. It's, I could cry thinking you, about I that can see right it welling now. up now. It's fine. It's fine. I wanted to point out the fact that one of our favorite authors is graduated from that same oh universe. Yes, gosh, from that same Spelman. institution, Spelman College. They do good Alice work. Alice Walker. Alice Walker. And she they has, she's she's giving us so many gifts. Like I said, she's formed who I am as a person. And a lot of that is because of I'm, the education. Like, Bell Hooks, why I was bringing her up, because she kept reiterating that education is a practice of freedom. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's Sunday and Kat is preaching. preaching. Okay. Preach, preach, preach. So, yeah. And also, one of my clients, she got like a full ride to Spelman and she just graduated from Yale Law. I mean, this year. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the like, they're up good. here. And that's the stuff that you don't hear about a lot. You mm. know what I mean? Like, usually it's just, you know, you just see somebody getting dragged on South Park. But it's like, <laughs> oh, no, we're uh -oh. not we're not doing that here. We are lifting like these girls, just like those girls from New Orleans who solved the Pythagorean theorem and don't nobody care. Well, and I was thinking, you know, for all of those young women that were sitting there, these are the people that are going to be solving the, you know, solving these problems mm -hmm. and facing some of this stuff. Like we talked about um, your dedication and how uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, like how you could be at work and be an accomplished person and have somebody, you know, sort of publicly challenging publicly you, challenging you and, and based on just how you look based mm -hmm. on um i can't understand what you, you i don't know if the lashes are in your way for your reading but can you repeat that because i can't understand i'm about to make you understand from real the quick. front to back what, what you did you feel in that pull one hand back can you repeat Eat that, that? <laughs> okay because what what, Cause what what oh i would love to keep what? talking as a matter of fact oh my yeah God. let's get you together so just you know to see all these young women in this position of you know getting their education and all of being families, celebrated and being celebrated because you know they are at the entry point of the world you know like this is the beginning of you know their um experiences it was just it was overwhelming it was beautiful i felt really honored to be a part of it um and then, you know, Kentanji Brown, that's who got me, actually. Because when she oh. came on, so they both got honorary doctorates, okay. which was very nice. That's and cool. Kentanji was like, I wasn't even going to speak, but then I thought about it and was like, you know, this is a unique opportunity. And I, and I have kids who are now going into college and they'll be in your spot in a few, mm. in a few short years. So it was her thing about daughters got me. Google it. I'm sure it's on the Spellman thing, but it got me. I just sat there like, oh my God. Having a daughter is such Moody, a humbling experience. do not start talking about experience. daughters right now. <laughs> it's a humbling experience. Boy, it's a life shake. It's, it is a core shaker. And I'm going to stop it right there, but she got me with well, that. Well, do you feel like you understand your mom better now that you've had your daughter? Because you're the same as me. Like, you had your son first, then you I had did. a daughter. And I feel like, I did mm -hmm. feel like I got a better understanding of my mom having my, my first child. Mm -hmm. But when I had my daughter, so many things crystallized between... <laughs> my mom's behavior mm -hmm. when I was younger. And it was just fear. She was just scared for me yeah. and didn't know how to communicate that <clears throat> without freaking me out. So I don't know. I feel like, yes, I do feel like having a daughter helps me understand. 
I would just say with both, just being a parent in general helped me understand her. Specifically with mom, I mean, I think I've always had a connection with, with my mom and I always kind of understood it because, you know, I had brothers too. So I got to see the contrast between the things that she's worried about in terms of her sons versus her daughters. And I think sometimes being, both of us being women, we always... There was a connection there that maybe sometimes my brothers didn't always have with her. Okay. Because so, y'all were a team girl in the house. Kind of, in okay. a way. I feel like me and my, my daughter and I have that. You know, mm -hmm. we do that. You guys are team husband. girl. We were sitting at the kitchen table this morning, mock, not mocking her father, but we both were looking at each other like, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Captain Potatoes oh, over yeah, here. Captain, it was literally Captain <laughs> Potatoes, frying potatoes. I had my kitchen's been clean. I'm like, the problem is, is that we live here. Like I cleaned and we need to move out because I want everything to stay like this. <laughs> and I was on the phone with my brother who's in Japan and I was like, hey, can you make sure you don't, I was antagonizing him. And my daughter was there. I'm like, can you clean up after yourself? You know what I mean? He was like, I, he was like, why would I do that? And he was going into that. And me and my daughter were looking at each other like, sometimes you don't be cleaning up after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you be leaving grease on the stove. I, I like to refer to, a lot of men are unburdened. I feel like women just have more of a burden. Yes. Men just mentally are relieved of, I mean, that's what privilege mm. is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's just all the things you don't have to think about where for me, it's like, you know, the longer this goes unclean. <laughs> the worse it is for me. Yeah. I'm gonna be and then things will continue to mount up. So. Yeah, we're trying to regulate it. So before. actually, we have to mount it. Actually, I've got a surprise for you. Do you? Pop quiz. Okay. So what? I don't know if I should even do it. Okay. You might know. When is our podcast anniversary? It's May the 21st or 2nd, I believe. No. Is it in May? It's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> May 27th? May 27th is when we published our first full oh, episode. Oh, my baby's birthday. How could I ever forget that? <laughs> you did. You managed I it. I did it. I am so good. That's my superpower, forgetting. <laughs> so, oh, awesome. I was like, Yay. wait a minute. Because I was thinking to myself, like, the other day, I was like, wait a minute. Shouldn't we be starting a new season? Like, aren't we like coming up on a fourth year? Ta -da. Aren't we like we did it? <laughs> yes, we <Confetti>. did it. <laughs> like, yay! We did it, oh guys. God. They said it could be done. We hit. Oh my um, god! Yeah, uh, we'll be at. So by the time we publish this, yeah, oh it'll be past gosh. our pod anniversary. So congratulations, Whoa. happy anniversary! This feels so sudden. I'd like to thank <laughs> myself, like Snoop Dogg does. Um, and cat. And cat. Yeah, and I guess cat. <laughs> you know, and some other folks. Yes. Um, um, that's funny. Okay, so I was, see, I want to have credit for May, and you were like, nope. <laughs> I got blood. Well, know. even if it was, then oh, we've been done, missed it. We've been done, <laughs> missed it. You heard it here, folks. Okay, been done, missed it. For people in other countries who don't know what that means, that means the time has passed. <laughs> that's what that I means. I used two forms of the past <laughs> tense. It's funnier. <laughs> It is. <laughs> Thanks, you know. Yes. Oh, um, my yes. gosh. Okay. Yes. Well, that's exciting news, speaking of, you know, milestones yes. and stuff. And so, yeah. So, this is how busy <sighs> May has been. We May forgot our pod oh my So, last year for our pod we had our pod father on, Eric we Dizzy. Did. Shout out to Eric So, Dizzy. I thought about maybe trying to either repeat that for okay. the, uh, the launch of season four. Okay. Or maybe having Chris Spangle on, who's our okay. other pod father. Oh, yeah, he is. He's we like a... Sad we don't have any pod mothers. Maybe I hope to be someone. I think I'm claiming it. We are definitely going to be multiple pod people's moms. pod mothers. Yeah, I'll be your pod mom. Yeah, that's we'll cool. be your Perry pod mother. Yay. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. It's a fun image. Uh, okay, but so wrapping up the, you know, graduation sitch, guys, it was very nice, very heartfelt. Congratulations to... Congratulations, Cache. You are yes. beautiful. All the, the graduates of 2024. All that work. You guys and doing are it on amazing. the first try. Oh, my God. It was just, it, it all was that everything. Work. And shout out to my friend, because speaking of, you know, all of the work that goes into events. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when I say she laid out Cache's party, she had the full bar. There was like a bartender there who worked at her, oh. was there bartending. We had the full, um, a chef came in and cooked salmon sliders, these Ooh. chicken sliders, macaroni and cheese that was delicious. Because you know the how the macaroni patty. and cheese can go down. It was so, everything was amazing. The balloons, there was a DJ. 
Um, there was cigar lounge on the back porch. Um, we had it was a whole vibe. You didn't so go nowhere. We had a great time. So because um, you know you'll be at a party and everything's cool, but it's like. Oh. <sighs> and you gotta, you know, yeah, no, it was none of that. no. She had she everything had I was looking for, so it was beautiful. Only note, only negative note I will say about the graduation was that you cannot have an event. I don't want to just say a black event. I don't want to say that because I don't know how white folks are about this or any other. I'll variation. let you know. I'm a white expert. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You can. I will defer to you on this okay. one. So you don't leave open seating at a graduation, a ticketed event like that. Like to me, a graduation because what happened was when we got there. A few minutes before, you know, the start of the ceremony, um, maybe we there was 12 of us. We were supposed to get there earlier so we could all sit together. Obviously, we're also black, so we were late, okay? And not late on time, I think but late. Like Atlanta's in a time dimension where it's impossible to be on time. It was thank you. The traffic there is the worst. Um, but anywho, we get there before the ceremony starts and we couldn't find seats all together, which was fine. But then it's like here's two seats here, here's th three or four seats here. And you're trying to go, oh, these are safe. These are safe for someone. They have their coats and stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They got their coats and stuff in there. And so it's like, you know, somebody is... tried to do that. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, pro you, you when it's open seating, you got to get there. Have ushers. Mm hmm. So my thing is, you can save your seat for a while, but there comes a point, maybe like 15 minutes before we're going to start. So this there were shit. no ushers? No. Not one? Not one. Well, I even went up to the, to the security guard and was like, excuse me, because they did say over the overhead. You're right. The whites would not have that. No. Overhead announcements. Okay. No saving seats, guys. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You need to have somebody coming in and enforcing that. I'm but not then, trying to fight. Nope. I'm right. not trying to That's fight what nobody. I'm saying. Like, that'll be too awkward, like trying to be like, I'm sorry, you're violating you the heard policy. What they said, you don't just... care about that. Well, you know, we don't give a I damn know. about that. I Bitch, know. this seat is safe. Fight me. And I wasn't getting ready to do that looking cute like I did. So no, I just thought, not that's... at the grad. I'm not going to be the person who it... popped off at graduation. Embarrassing somebody, yeah. you know? So I was like, okay. So that was my only note for that. And okay. also, a little extra production note. When you, there was a few people that you guys shouted out that I felt like it would have been nice to see their picture pop up on the projection mm -hmm. screen so that, you know, production we notes. could know. Just, mm -hmm. just that was the only thing. But other than that. Just the visual lovely. storytelling. Visual storytelling. That's all. That's all, guys. So. Oh, Enough boy. about that. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So. Um, Super duper. Yeah, man. All right. So what's next? I, you know, we kind of talked about. Um, uh oh Oh, bless you. <coughs> uh. Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to say something about, you know, um, Jasmine Crockett. Thank you. Her lashes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about, you know, like, so thinking about these young women graduating from college, now transitioning into these, into the real work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's still pretty. What? I mean, I was going to say, like, <laughs> It's just so abusive. It's still the same. I feel yeah. sorry for them that they're going to have to face this kind of stuff. Yeah. But what I think that um, HBC... I feel like Spellman will prepare them for that, though. You just you took it off my I'm phone. sorry. That was it. That was just my instinct. I feel like We're Spellman's the got them. The whole reason... Do you want to tell the people why Spellman exists? No. Oh. I want you to. <laughs> Well, why all the HBCUs exist? Because there was a big no darkie sign on all the <laughs> regular. Play that music that's like <laughs> the old music. <laughs> like a little mantra music. Yeah. In yeah, the olden that. days, yeah, there was just a big old, you know, we don't allow like black people and Jews here. Ricky racism. So, yeah, oh, there he is. So, yes, but instead of just being like, well, I guess we don't get to learn, <laughs> black people were like, we'll just build our own we'll colleges learn. and universities mm -hmm. and educate our people there. And and so here we are. So what do you think the biggest difference is between the kind of education that you get at a predominantly white institution or a PWI versus a HBCU? Now, to be fair, college. I've never gone to an HBCU. Okay. But if I had to guess... Yes. It's you have professors who just aren't openly hostile towards you and mm -hmm. don't want to see you succeed. I think when mm -hmm. I hear about the experiences, like for my family who went to Crispus Attucks, right, which is a uh, historically black high school in our city, but is now you know it's open. Air. Yeah, you know they're all open. To that's the thing with anything that's black. White people can go there. We just yeah. made it so it's somewhere black people can go. Right. But since most of my career has been in, you know, predominantly white institutions, most of my teachers who didn't just, most of my teachers just ignored me. 
quite honestly, because that takes more, less energy. But the other ones would just be openly hostile towards me or mm. constantly. That's why I loved math, because you weren't allowed to tell me I'm wrong. It's like, um, it adds up right here. Yeah. yeah. Two plus three is six. Just leave me alone. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, I, you know, I think what I, lo- what I love for Cache and what I love for, you know, um, all the graduates. All of the graduates, any graduate, people who get to go to HBCUs is that there's a certain amount of sisterhood because it is a all girls college. Um, but any, it, there's a sense of community and sisterhood that I kept hearing them re- reiterate during the whole sort of um, yeah. ceremony that they're like, you know, we just, I sh- you just need that in life though. Like you really, really just need those um, people that you know you can count on, those people to help build you up, those people that. Uh, can assist you and help you see yourself. You know what I mean? Like truly see yourself. Because that can be hard to do in life when every yeah. institution you're in, the people who look like you are either trying their best to be something they're not, to assimilate to something. Mm-hmm. And so for, you know, um, Jasmine to be in the halls of Congress reading somebody like that. Now, whether or not that was like, I mean, I do think that you could debate. Like, yeah, I mean, you're trying to make that point. Um, and... It's unprofessional or whatever, but the but the point is, is that like, where do how did we get here though? Mm-hmm. And she didn't start how did we, it. That's that's all my point. she did was just finish I, it. I'm responding in the same mm-hmm. the same energy well, that came toward like, me. I then, gave it back, and I just need clarification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. <laughs> it's like, oh, what are, what are we doing? Like, what are we gonna do? Like, what are we? Because it's and like I said, I don't like seeing women tearing each other down, going after each other's appearances and stuff like that. But however, that <laughs> since that's how we're starting it, then okay, let's go there. Because it's like you also because you're you're because you can't attack her ideas, no. or her policy. No, so you're just going to attack her the fact that she's decided to wear eyelashes. Which once again, feeling personally attacked. I like wearing eyelashes. I like how they make you look on camera. They look so cute and Thank nice. you. Okay, as long as they're not the ones that look like, you know. Everything needs to be furbies. applied properly. Sure. But yeah, it's, um, and you, and I would make the case that Madge Tatch Gadge, her dye job has not <laughs> been applied properly. Oh my God. It's you in know need of a toner. Is. And it's all one color. Like that's not really how you do blonde artfully. Well, and you would know because you're a professional, so you're allowed. To I say have that, some expertise in, in the fact that I don't do blonde. Like blonde is hard. Yeah. Like I don't. I don't feel like doing all that. So yes, it can be hard to find a talented colorist, but mm-hmm. I can tell you hasn't found one, and that's Ooh. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Well, see now, you, and you deserve this because. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's but that's the thing too, though. Like I think sometimes when we are responding, you know, you're talking about Bill Hooks and her. Uh, what was it? Talking, like, talking, talking back. back. Like that's, that's well, have you ever Were you it. ever told that when you were growing up? No talking back? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, I just want I'm to let still being people. told now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reoccurring thing. Yes. And I hated that. Because mm. I'm like, well, then what? Then why teach me to talk? I'm like, mm. yeah, there's, a, even in my, I'm not going to say which one, but even in one of my marriages, I was given that note. Like, why can't I just take correction without having to say something back? And it's like, it's because I'm not a child. Wait a minute. Yeah. We got to move on Thought from I'd that. Thought I set you off. <laughs> we got to we gotta move on from that. But like I said, I'm, I couldn't stand that situation because it's like, yeah. yeah, like you want to just be able to, you know. Dictate to me or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, no, mm-hmm. I have something to say as well. So, yeah, yeah I, that's what I, I, I think that's mm-hmm. why I've started this love affair with podcasting. Wow. Because it's the ultimate form of talking back kind of is though and and the thing is is like you can't attack my credentials like I think I was listening to Jasmine kind of run down her credentials Mm. and and I was like yo so she attended yeah the University of Houston Law Center graduated in 2006 with a Juris Doctor I don't even know what that is sounds fancy she's a woman of letters uh she was a member of the National Bar Association as well with the Dallas Black Criminal Bar Association and Representative Crockett completed law school and passed the bar in 2006. But it, w- I mean, okay, let's I- see what Marjorie's done. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This will be fun. But the thing was, she was basically kind of like, look, you know, it doesn't even matter that I have all this. I'm still having to defend myself because of just uh, something sort of from her, like some lashes or something. Which so, is- from what I can, she definitely hasn't passed anybody's bar. She hasn't even been to grad school. Uh, oh, well, I was just going to read her a little thing right here. Okay, Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, sometimes referred by her initials, MTG, 
is an American far-right politician, businesswoman, and conspiracy theorist who has been a U.S. representative for Georgia's 14th congressional district since 2021. So -hmm. not very long. Um, Oh, she's not that much older than us. I would have assumed differently. And um, she went to the University of Georgia. Bachelor in business degree in the business That's what I'm saying. She hasn't been to graduate school. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, yeah, That's she it. she got what did she, she got? What we got? <laughs> <laughs> what did she get a degree in? In a business administration. Okay, so not law actively. No. Okay, mm-hmm. and um, so I would feel embarrassed correcting someone who was as credentialed as Miss Crockett. That's kind of what she was saying. She's like, don't let this wig and these lashes fool you. I'm credentialed as hell. Yeah, it's like, I'm just from do. Texas. We look good. Bitch, put some respect <laughs> on my name. And it's sort of nuanced, too, because, you know, when you're talking about the way that, you know, black women sometimes do present themselves, it's such a tricky thing, right? So if I show up with my natural hair, you're going to say I'm unprofessional. unprofessional. If I'm wearing a wig, you're intimidating it's a problem. Me. Yeah, it's a real situation. So it's like, <laughs> with, you know, sometimes it's, I mean, it's a matter of taste, right? You it's think almost you're, as if you can't do anything right. It and it's like, like trying that. to discourage you from being in that space. How about cue the Barbie monologue? Okay. <laughs> America Ferreira, take it away. <laughs> and one of my other favorite quotes from that movie, time's up, motherfucker. That was from Barbie? Yeah, they bleeped it out. It was when uh, Issa Damn. came down the steps as oh, the president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes. That was a great line. <laughs> She's great. Yeah, so it's just, you know, I, I, I like that we didn't even plan this, but how that bell hooks thing kind of went into Because I was thinking that. I'm like, man, these girls I, are going to have to learn how to talk back I recommend a bit. every black woman who is in any academic space read this mm. book. It helped It helped with trauma that I was still holding on from being at PWIs. Because they make you feel crazy. Like the last part, I haven't even finished it yet, but the last part was when she was talking to another student and just about how she's fighting for her sanity. And I'm like, because I had to, like I said, I dropped out the first time I went to college. And looking back now, I was incredibly depressed. Mm. But I felt like I was failing. Like I just felt like I personally wasn't enough. Even though for by the time I got to college, I've been at PWIs for 12 years like, a that's a long time it's to like deal time. <laughs> with constant, I mean, you know, um, racial, like, well, they call it microaggressions, but when it's aimed at a child, it's just aggression. Mm. So I was like, yeah, like, it's so much of um, what formed me that now that looking, I think the thing that I found um the most discouraging about her work, even though it was very encouraging to hear that. She wrote this in like the 70s. And if anything, it's worse now. Like they're rolling back all these programs now for DEI, like trying to blame everything on like letting black people in or having affirmative action. That um, was another note. They were trying to say that she was basically like an affirmative action hire. Or like was? a diverse hire. Like that's the narrative around... Um, Mar- Marjorie Taylor Greene, like the, the saying that the elected official see. was an affirmative action hire. Let me hire? find this. Let me find the. I'm sorry for yelling. I, th- how that it's it's democracy. She, she was voted whole, in. How is that see, affirmative see. action? Let's see. The fact that that district's allowed to vote is yeah, that the problem? Basically. Okay. Is this the one? But yeah, it was like I've read a few articles and I'm like, this is crazy. And that's crazy the thing because saying. her base is so stupid, they would believe that because they don't even know how government works. Because I was reading a thing the other day about how many people blame Biden for the repeal of Roe versus Wade because it happened, happened while he was president. Watch. Like they don't understand yeah. like how the or, and works. the fact that he didn't appoint any of those judges. Wow. Like, and the fact that Trump took credit for it. Like, nobody cares if they like abortion. They just will find any reason. Like, no matter what, they'll just find a way to blame it. someone else other than, you know, Melania's husband. Man, Melania's husband. I love, listen, if I can find it, I'm going to put it up. But I was reading, there was a few different articles that I was reading. And a lot of the narrative surrounding her just in general it has to do with, you know, her looks or her, or her credentialing. She was... Um, and maybe she was on. No, it was an interview. Does Who she was look bad? I'm trying her? to think. I thought she looked great. She <laughs> Does she right. look bad? Does she look bad? Well, in she any looks way? bad. Yeah, she looks terrible. And that's her on a good day. <laughs> Marjorie, bless it. Girl, you look mm-hmm. a mess. Somebody was interviewing her and speaking with her about it. And I think that's kind of what she was saying. Because that's when she was running down her credentials and stuff like that. And anywho, a lot of that was coming out. You know, so I can't actually let me not. Because I'm sure somebody in the notes will be like, that's not who said that. But oh, there was the, there she was, looks amazing. 
Yeah, she's, I've never she's really. Cute. I've only seen the video of her talking and stuff like that. But I mean, was she talking to Joy Reid? She might have been speaking with Joy Reid. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of like you know the undertone is is that you're only here for a certain reason. You're unintelligent, and it's like it doesn't matter how many credentials you mm-hmm. have. You know they're gonna. You're the implication is she was like yeah. The implication is that I'm ghetto or that I shouldn't be here or that I'm like a diversity hire. I don't know if that directly came from. Marjorie Taylor Greene, but that is something that she feels being in her job. Mm-hmm. Like that is like people a narrative. probably coming up and asking her for coffee. Yeah, and how stuff. much do you make? I can't believe they pay you that. Like how they did. Um, what's her name? Shirley Chisholm. Oh. She was like, this white man came up to her every day and asked, and she was like, you could stop asking me that. <laughs> talk about. Oh my God. The talking nerve. back. No, talk about talking back. Shirley Chisholm. Yeah. Have you seen that? Uh, no, it I was haven't. good. Regina King did an amazing. I'll have to. Job. I don't. I'll. I'll. I want to read about her before I watch it. It was so good. By, yeah, even though like I, that's a. Well, I want to say because in the talking back, she was. You know, Bell Hooks is talking about her. You know, adventures in academia, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. fact that she had to quit. She had to keep switching grad schools because it was just so hostile, and mm. the fact that you know because she wants to go into. Um, you know, English departments, and she was reading a book by another author, a, a, a white feminist writer who was talking about how, um, you know, one time when she was meeting with a professor at a school and he had said something to the effect of universities, university English departments don't hire Negroes or women. And so... I'm both. And so, you know, Bill Hooks is like reading that. And she's like, huh, that's interesting because... When I'm in classrooms, I'm I'm concerned because when I graduate, is there going to be any work for me? And like everyone's always like, oh, you'll be you've been basically saying like, oh, you'll definitely get hired because you'll be a diversity hire. Like there's, you know, this See? whole thing, even though the people who are saying this, like no one's concerned the fact that we've never had a black female professor. Like you're saying this, but there's no Crazy. evidence of right, that. Right. And it's like I hear that a lot where it's just like, oh, yeah, well, if we let them in, they're just going to hire each other. Like once again, there's no creative like you. You just. The only thing you can imagine is your way of thinking. What you're doing. As opposed to like, oh, actually, we're strengthened by having multiple voices. It was just amazing read. I can't. Oh, oh it's that. just. Oh, oh. But yes, it does tie. Like I said, it was just so it was so timely, which is sad because it was written a long time ago. Yeah. So peace to Bell Hooks. She died not too long ago. Like I said, she helped me get to, she helped me recover from that terrible book, Milk in My Coffee. <laughs> remember? Do you remember that, Moni? I do. Remember? I remember do. how upset I was by having to. She helped me recover. <laughs> Dion, are you hearing this? I had to set, Dion, we know you're listening. <laughs> no, we had, I had to set that book down and I was like, you know what? I'm finally going to read some Bell Hooks. And I, mm. I read Ain't I a Woman? I'm mad you had to cleanse your palate with some old bell I did. Bell I was deeply disturbed in my spirit. Oh, man. And it was just, oh. Because once again, it just it was so crazy when I was watching. I finally watched American Fiction. So good. So good. But it's that same thing of it's like, why? Oh, why do you like this? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and but at the same time, it did give me not empathy for people who like stuff like that. But it, it, I feel slightly less judgmental about it because I do think that there, there has to be a, a place between, you know, um, looking down at stuff that maybe is like not for you because you feel like, oh man, this is, it's so basic and it's so, it like lacks imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then when it's, you know, like his book that he was reading, I'm like, do or writing it's like nobody wants to nobody read wanna, don't nobody this want this shit <laughs> this is crazy and it's not that it's not fat like you have a fascinating mind the fact that you can do and the artfulness and way you're in the way that you're presenting this information is like wow this is impressive but because most people aren't at that wavelength you can't like, sell it you just right so then where's the middle ground yeah. between what's beautifully constructed art and what gets well, people what in the door? What happens so. is you have to die. And then years later, when people rediscover your work, they'll be like, this was good. People have to die. Yeah. That is real messed up. Because that's like it um, is. Van Gogh. No people one liked his stuff. He didn't sell die. paintings when he was alive. Them things go for millions of dollars now. So, yeah. So if we've learned anything today, So if folks, there's anything 
we've learned about art is it's much more valuable after you're gone. Right. So there'll be a monument to us after we leave this earth. It'll be like, you know who used to be? Yeah. Man, <laughs> you know who used to be? <laughs> Boy, dropping some gems. We should have listened <laughs> to them. Fake-ass book, book club. You know it's just, yeah, it, but it is interesting to have the scope of history to look mm-hmm. back on stuff and been like, huh. That was that might have been some popular like the little ephemeral pop bullshit doesn't usually make it into mm-hmm. the future. It doesn't end up. It doesn't age well. It like doesn't real age art, well. real art ages really it well. It doesn't. Even when you hear songs, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. That we were popular, say when we were younger, and it's like hit me on my two way. It's like what the fuck is that, man? Uh, hit me on my two way. It it's like, if you want to hear my, yeah, it was. Oh, know but you know what, what I did hear the other day was like, wow, I actually didn't appreciate this when it came out. This song's what? freaking amazing. In Vogue's Never Gonna Get It, My Lovin'. That song is That's amazing. It's a, it is amazing. I'm pretty it's sure. The arrangement. I love the heart. In Vogue. In when Vogue they were was, out. Are you kidding me? I mean, of course I love them, but I didn't know that I was like, no, this is like, if we're this real came real. out today, this would still be a hit. It's like it's this so is nice. an amazing song. Somebody should remix it. They probably Come should. On back. Actually, there was a remix to Never Gonna Get It. Oh, who did it? I think they, I don't know, some producers, but oh. like they, but I mean, when the song came out and then the remix, you know, they make oh, the song yeah, then the re- like at yeah, the time. I got you. I'm so, um, but yeah, the, in the video, the video still hits. They like, look amazing. They, I haven't seen the video in years, but I'm sure they look awesome. amazing. They always did. <sighs> it's they like, wow. Did. Wow. And you can definitely see the influence they had on Destiny's Child. Mm-hmm. You know, like the. Ooh, and their look is back now. Mm-hmm. Like that the 90s, 90s are back. Yeah, that's very much back. Um, You're going to have to break out those microwave <laughs> ponytails and lip Ooh, liner. That was my favorite. <laughs> and that, that nice little swoop. Listen, that this boy, actually, because I got this slick back and these big earrings and a red. Listen, this is, I cute. think I have a picture where I look very much Just like, like that. This. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure you were in eighth grade. Um, <laughs> but you know, I was trying not to get sad when you were saying all of this because I'm like, oh. what do we tell these new kids coming up? Like, what would you tell the class of 2024? Like, if we're making the opposite, observation that Mm. bell hooks wrote this in the 70s and Mm. it's really like we see our like rights getting peeled back we see you know this cultural shift where you know i mean people are just blatantly racist out here in these streets which Mm -hmm. which is kind of like not that it's nice it's good to know that the shit that we know has always exist underneath the rug so to speak it's like okay y'all feel real bold to say it but like where do we go from here how do you inspire the generation coming up um behind us like when they're growing up in this sort of hostile peeled back environment of our lives yeah yeah i'm glad you asked me that moni are you yes okay good it's got an answer good books yeah you got to keep reading you've got to keep learning curiosity that's what bell was pushing i haven't gotten to the end of the book i think i'll know better once i get to the end of the book i'll ask you next week friend okay (laughs) but i think that that curiosity as to um the beautiful thing about books is it amounts you to put yourself in the narrative of someone else so a lot of times for these people, when people are lashing out, a lot of times it's fear. Sure. Like we did, you didn't want to talk about, I'm bringing it up anyway, the bear that? versus man debate. Okay, let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? And I think the way I, you you answered like, yeah, you can't. Because your, your first question was, why am I in the woods? I <laughs> Such just a needed Moni to know. Question. Why Such the fuck am I out there? Such a Moni response, which right. is fair though, yeah, because that like, tells you your mind state, right? Yeah. So my, my scenario I gave you was that you had escaped <laughs> your first assailant. And we're trying to get out of the woods. And I said that and was a terrible was like, day. Yeah, it's a bad day. So would you rather, when you're tr- when you're running, would you rather run into a bear? Or you could pretend to be a runaway slave. Like, would you rather would you rather run into a bear or a man? And then I asked, was it, is it a white man or is it a you black man? You did ask and that. And you said, just a man. We didn't get that. Yeah. Um, and I, you know... Here's the thing. This is my rationale. I say a bear because any man that's out in the woods, what are you doing? Like bears live there. Well, I said maybe that man was escaping his assailant too. I don't think he was. I don't think he was either. And even still, it's I. You know, you hear things about what you could do. Like if you ever come across a bear, you know, either you're making yourself bigger or you're just still. Like I feel like I would try to do that because I don't think that. Unless this bear would, like has rabies or is in an agitated state, it's probably not going to just go after me. I don't well, that's think. what I was going to say when it comes down to fear, because it's like, am I going to am I running into a bear that's afraid? Yeah. Or, I or am I or am I re- like, what is the state of mind of both of these things? But my answer was bear, too. I think bears are usually cool. Usually the bears we see are in a state of agitation. They're either captured or 
um, being hunted. Like we we don't really run, in, we don't really get to see bears interacting with people in the wild just on some, we, even when we do, like I said, they're going through our trash. Yeah, you know what like I mean? They're not, the they don't mountains. hunt people. They don't eat people like to us. I mean, they would, don't get it twisted. Uh, they I mean, just like ass. I would eat a bear if it came yeah, down to it. But yeah. it's like, that's not my first choice. Right. Like there's a lot of stuff. Like if anything, we'd be fighting over some salmon. <laughs> If you know me and a bear, up with the bear. If, if me and a bear were to get into a beef, it'd probably be over some salmon. Are you and gonna quite lose? Honestly, I'm just gonna let the bear have. Well, how old is the bear? Nah, I'm gonna let him have it. And actually, though, because I don't want your mama showing up. Thank so, you. So yes, yes, it's, you give it to the bear. So yes, it's really that fear. So a lot of times you have to find out. Um, you have to assuage people's fear, which isn't fair because that's just giving black women more work. Like There's it's no like, way hey, it. guess what? You guys get to solve racism. It's like, even though you didn't invent it, even though it, it's always this idea of since you're the victim of it, you need to solve it. But it's like, well, what about the perpetrators? <laughs> and so are we inviting them to read books? I don't feel like they want to. Well, they're not listening to us. So who, right, how do you get, so it's it's one thing for the class of 2024 or whomever mm -hmm. to read books, stay hopeful, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You still are interfacing with the people who refuse well, to engage in reality. Well, remember when we uh, watched She Did That? No. On Netflix, it was a documentary about uh, black female entrepreneurship. I feel like we did an episode about it. Nuh-uh. We didn't. It was the Hell Netflix. Nah. I don't remember that. Okay. Well, but maybe I made that up. I don't up. remember a lot of It stuff was good. That. But it's it was basically like you might have to make your own lane. Like for me, that's what I ended up doing. I was like, there's just no way in the world. After I did that internship, I was like, as God is my witness, I will never work for white people again. Oh, no, not as God as my witness. That was very. <laughs> <laughs> it is really hard. Or I'm not wor I'm not working for racist white people. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really hard to find. There's like 73 not racist white people and they don't live here. Oh, no. Chris, did you hear that? <laughs> we know you're listening. <laughs> well, I, you know, I understand. Um It's just well, So that's what makes it hard for me because I want to keep you hopeful. But it's like I don't, you know. If it's getting worse, and but my whole thing is like listen, we're getting we more resources, more opportunities, more education. We don't have to use their template for success. We don't. And we then, can start creating our own paths to success. I think with the internet, there's way more democratization as far as where you can go economically. It's so true. It's just, you I'm, know, I'm, ladies, keep your heads up. I, I, if there wasn't hope, why would we even do this podcast? Yeah. Well, it's a vent. That's true. You know, it, well, like you said, I guess creating your own lane. And I will say, I feel a lot of hope when I see my daughter and her friends. I think for, she has such a diverse group of friends, you know, like, I don't think that this generation is going to carry as much of their parents sort of you know white man's burden with them really because I, I don't know I, did you I, always had a diverse friend group we not as hers not hers is way more yeah. diverse yeah no. okay she's more social too okay she is she's a social little thing so yeah but like I do but yes I have had a nice I like all kinds of people okay. like I you am do. curious to me it's like yeah what's your deal <laughs> what's your deal what's that about <laughs> no I love that well you know what I think this might be a great space to take a break I agree um and in the spirit of answering some questions maybe we'll come back and do some I can can I be judgmental yes yes we're gonna we'll add, we're gonna answer some am I the asshole questions yeah so we'll come back and do that you guys so we'll be right back All right, guys, and we're back from the break. Good break. Welcome back. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, this has been fun. It has so many giggles. Yeah. You guys should probably check out Patreon. We get way more into we it. Do. It's fine. Um, and then if you're friends with us, you can hear about what we talk about even before Patreon. And we, oh, man, people get talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Not people get talked about. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Well, guys, um, <sighs> like I said, we were, you know, we were talking about a lot of stuff, but I did. I thought it'd be fun for us to sort of ask some questions. I don't know. Like, I know it's not an actual segment, but I always thought it'd be fun to have a, re a reoccurring segment where we do some advice letters or sure. answer questions. And so we want to do, am I an asshole? I like it when they do it on Sorry, We're Canceled. Also, shout out to BT. Oh, it was out. an accident. Did you see that? I did. That is terrible. Yeah. My much love to our brother in podcasting, BT. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, but yeah, they do on, um, sorry, we're canceled. But uh, I be the asshole. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I always like to hear because they yell at each other and argue. They do. Fun. Fun. <laughs> of course, you would think that's fun. I feel like that's <laughs> oppressive, but that's fine. It does have to happen sometimes. It was like, why? Was just, it's so fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> okay, so you guys, um, I'm going to let Kat. Uh, ask her question first and she's yes. going to ask it to me and then she'll give yes. her opinion after. And I'm going to um, edit it because it's long. That is long. <clears throat> okay, go. Okay, would I be the asshole for asking my brother to not wear a dress to my graduation? I, male 21, have recently finished university and my graduation is being held 19th of June. It'll be my first graduation because in England we don't have graduations for high school. And I've been asked to give a speech at my graduation. My little brother is 12 years old. He and I are like best friends. Well, actually, let me read it how it is. My little brother is 12 years old. Him and I are like best friends. Pause. If you just graduated from university, you're not using English correctly. Someone should have told you that it would be he and I are like best friends. It was hard to read that. See, we are seriously uh, incredibly close. He is a very girly boy. He has long hair. He likes traditionally girly things. At my birthday last month, when my parents arrived with my brother, he came in a dress. This was going to sound selfish, but instantly the atmosphere changed from being about me to being about him. As I mentioned, my graduation is in a few weeks' time, and today my mom mentioned that my brother is planning to wear a dress to my graduation. I didn't say anything, but I can't help feeling that this, again, is going to turn from a day about me and my achievements to a day about him. I wrote out this paragraph explaining how I feel and plan to send it to my parents, but then I started having second thoughts. I'm worried that it's going to make him upset or make him think I don't love him how he is. I'm also worried my mom will think I'm being selfish and take it badly. So I really want to know from an impartial people whether you thought I was being unfair. I floated this idea to my girlfriend and she thinks it's unfair for me to ask him not to wear something. She says it shouldn't be my decision, which I understand it shouldn't. And even if I didn't ask him or even if I did ask him and he said no, I would still let him come to my graduation. I wouldn't want him to miss it for the world. Mm. So Moni, do you think that this young man is an a-hole. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say you're an asshole for having the feeling. Like, we all have our feelings. We're all allowed to feel however we feel about things. Do I feel like you're an asshole for asking this 12-year-old child not to wear something to your graduation? Um, I'm going to say yes, I do. I feel like that's a bit of an asshole move. And I feel like it is because this is a child. And you said, if you asked them and they said, no, I'm still wearing the dress, you'd still let them go. So then what are we talking about? And then also, you don't want your graduation to be about it, but yet you're making it about it. You know what I'm saying? So like, is so my question to you is, what is the actual problem? Is it that the kid is wearing a dress, your brother, this person who you love, and you guys are close and besties? Is that the actual issue? Or is it the perception around being associated with somebody who's wearing a dress? Mm. And so if you're really concerned about that, that might be something you need to unpack in therapy. It doesn't have to be that big of a deal. Like if you have friends who you think or people around you who you think might oh, approach them or whatever. Oh, he even said his girlfriend was whatever. cool. Like, yeah, I think you're, even the girlfriend was like, yeah, I think you aren't your really friends. cool about this. Yeah, and so my thing is, like, do the work to understand why you're feeling like that. Is there ever a situation where it's okay to tell someone to not wear something? Um, yes. Okay. I mean, I think, well, I think you can request it. I mean, you mm -hmm. technically can't. I mean, people don't have to listen to you. But well, you would I'm hope that if you're sharing you that were, with somebody, say you're getting married That's or what I'm whatever. saying. Like, yeah. I feel like the only time we really get to tell people what to wear is when we're getting married. Yeah. And, and everyone's then, agreed, you know. Yeah, like everyone's kind of, it's a social agreement where it's like, you're going to be my bridesmaid, you're going to wear this. Right, I'm paying for the pictures. Yeah, and so like because it's, of and that. Because you're, it's a tacit, it's a, it's, an, it's a contract where sure. it's like, we're agreeing to be a part of this event, which is about you and celebrating your love. Sure. So we're just going to wear 
what you ask us to wear. Yeah. And I think in those in those situations, it's appropriate. But when you're just inviting people to celebrate something in your life, unless there's a theme, like mm -hmm. like I said, sometimes if you want to do a theme or something like that. But then, like I said, even if someone doesn't show up on theme, you usually still let them in. Um, but it made me think about was like in the 60s before it was acceptable for women to wear pants because to people then we're in drag right now. Yeah. So, you know, like it's like a woman in trousers. What? <laughs> and it's like so it would seem really silly. Like if this question was taking place in the I, so I like to use time because mm. it, you know, things that tend to be true seem to be true in different time periods. Okay. So like if it was the 60s and a guy was writing in saying like, oh, hello, because I, I imagine he has an accent since England. So, oh, cheerio, I'm writing in because I'm graduating from Oxford and uh, my little sister wants <laughs> to wear trousers to the ceremony and I just think it's inappropriate. What do you think? And it's like, that uh, sounds dumb, accent. right? <sighs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, I mean, because, but on. now, because we're so used to seeing women in trousers and pants, like yeah. it's not crazy to us. But to us in our American brains, or at least some of them, seeing who or we clock as, a, or even, well, once again, we're oh. an offshoot, we're bootleg England. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so for that, that, that Western mindset to see someone that we clock as male mm -hmm. in female clothes. Um, we don't even get as upset when we see who we clock as female in male clothes mm -hmm. because it's not humiliating to be a man. But for some reason, mm -hmm. women, a man wearing women's clothes is, is humiliating in our culture. So I think that's really more something we should take a look at as to being problematic. And maybe if you're taking a woman's <laughs> studies course while wow. you were at university, you might know that. If you can't tell, I think this person's an asshole. I, I do. <laughs> I don't think you have to stay forever an asshole, which is why I invite you to really unpack that. Because Read it is some a, bell hooks. Just, you know, <laughs> it's, it, he, the, this kid's not walking up on stage with you. They're not like showing his picture while you grab I'm your sorry. graduation. I was, like it's, I was picturing the little brother on his shoulders, like yeah, you know, people do a concert. It's not gonna be that. Like no. you're gonna. And my thing is, is like it's only gonna be highlighted if you're highlighting it. Mm -hmm. And again, you're saying that there was another event, and it was like, oh, it was about him wearing a dress. Well, all of them done seen him now, so it ain't about to be no goddamn surprise. They gonna know. And so like I said, okay. that was your birthday. A graduation is a much Nobody, larger event. Just, um, just go with it. I think if you give it that much attention and that much air, it'll amplify it. I think mm -hmm. if you just welcome this person who you say you love and cherish and is your bestie, I think you it'd be better to just accept them. Instead you know? of playing the fashion police. Yeah, like it's just not that deep. What are you going to be wearing? The day. Right, worry about your own outfit. Yeah. This little kid is just living Is it life. ironed? I bet it wasn't ironed. It probably wasn't. And this kid <laughs> you said has these emotional issues because they're adopted and all this stuff. Like, don't add to that. And it's on Juneteenth. That's, That's a, a day about freedom. Yeah, it is. Oh, y'all don't have Juneteenth over there. That was the. It's an informatics holiday about how that's when the black people all over here found out slavery was over. Yeah, a couple of years. Because yeah, late, they didn't tell everybody. Nah. So yeah, lead. Let that kid live. That's what yeah. I would say. That's yeah. my advice. And it sounds like that's yours well, we too. agree. Yep. Bam. Backwards high five. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right, friend. Let me see if all I got right. one for you. I don't think it's as long because you know yeah. it's just a. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Let me ask this. I would say I think it's nice that people have this as an exercise for perception checking because we do go into stuff and we feel strongly, but it's like, oh, wait a minute. Because I have yeah. been an asshole before. Of course. So we I could have. be being one now. That's why it's like there could be reformation. Like I'm not saying Or I'm like being assholed at. Yeah. And actually I think it's really unfair for assholes to be used as a pejorative. Assholes are very like useful. Let I mean, your asshole stop working and see how much you... <laughs> <laughs> it's not your life changes. <laughs> so here's my question for you, Kat. Okay? okay. Am I the asshole for refusing to financially support my elderly parents who neglected me during my childhood? Here's the context. I'm already going to say no. Shut the hell up and let me ask the question. Okay. <laughs> Shut your ass up. My parents were emotionally and financially neglectful during my upbringing. Now that they are elderly and struggling, my siblings expect me to contribute to their care. I feel conflicted due to my past experiences with them. Does this make me an asshole? Nope. Tell the people why. Um, here's the thing. You don't have to, like I said, if you feel like you were not financially provided for by your parents, because no one has this. It's hard when it's both parents, right? Because if you had a neglectful, like, um, sort of deadbeat parent that never came around, like, it wouldn't be a question of it. I guess I, I would want more context as to how you defined 
emotionally mm. and financially neglectful. Okay. So if they truly were, then no. But okay. since the other siblings are pitching in, that does, but that doesn't mean you have to mm -hmm. either. Like right. that you are choosing not to, um, it might damage your relationship with your siblings. If you choose to do that, that's your choice. But um, no, I don't think that makes you an asshole. Hmm. Like it would almost be a continuation of the abuse. Okay, so growing up, my parents were emotionally distant, rarely provided financial or emotional support. I often had to fend for myself, relying on friends and a part-time job to get through school. Despite their lack of support, I managed to build a successful career. When they say school, though, is life. that college? Yeah, college. Because my thing is like, okay, if they got you to a point where you were able to get to college, like, mm -hmm. to me, this is still a little ambiguous because it sounds like you didn't get everything you wanted. Like, Ooh. this isn't someone who was in foster care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if that was the point, like, to me, that's what I consider. Like, I, I'm going with the legal definition of, of neglect. neglect. Sure, sure, Not sure. just, like, they weren't all they could be. That is true, so, because sometimes that can be so a little if it, bit. So if that's the case, like you just felt like they didn't really measure up to what you wanted, then yes, you're being an asshole. But if they were truly in the, like, yeah, this is a little ambiguous. I'm going to go ahead and say they're just maybe being cheap. The kid yeah. is being cheap. Especially mm -hmm. since the other brothers and sisters want to pitch in. It makes me think, like, it couldn't have been that bad. Eh. So... <laughs> You know, being a person who has siblings, um, I feel like, you know, each child has an individual relationship with their parents. So even though you can do all the same things, um, your lived experience with your parents can be very different. Yes, yeah, true. And because we are different people. So I don't know if that's the measure necessarily, but I will. I agree with you in terms of like when we're defining, defining like what is abusive or neglectful. I'm like, I had a part-time job. I don't think I was neglected. It's like you had to work too. Oh, it's like maybe you Ooh. were like around people who didn't and that made mm -hmm. you feel like you were, but that ain't, that's not, that's not financial abuse. It's not. Well, let's just say, let's say it's full out financial abuse. Like okay. these parents were just hands, like you just had to fend for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't a lot of nurturing there. And then financially or otherwise, I don't think that you're obligated to necessarily take care of your parents. Um, but I think that if you do have siblings who are doing it and it's more like, well, I had to work while I was in college and they didn't even, it's like, I mean, you're being a bit of an asshole, but even then you don't have to, like you can be an asshole. And then there are two other people or a couple other people who help and take care of them. So, you know, they're taken care of, mm -hmm. but if you were like an only child and you're mad cause you had to work a part-time job to get through college. And Which you're I, not helping your parents like that would that, that would make you an say, asshole. That's my situation, yeah, I, and that that I would, would very much take care of my parents, mm -hmm. like because they were doing everything they could. So yeah. um, okay, that's fair. Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of times if you're asking, "Am, am I the asshole?" You kind of are uh, more often than not, like think, because well, almost because if you have the wherewithal to ask that question, there's a part of you that doesn't want to be an asshole, which is a good thing. That that part. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So mm -hmm. you're, this is coming from a good place. You want to live a life that's authentic. Yes. And, you um, and you do want to talk back if you I'm need quite to. Honestly, there's a lot of people too who did have abusive parents and still take care of them because they want to feel like they're doing the right thing regardless of what other people did to them. That's true. So sometimes that's just a, a path to a more peaceful life. Like sometimes mm -hmm. it is worth um, just doing the right thing, even though other people haven't done you right. Right. And That's, you don't want to be like them. Like sometimes exactly. I think it's that you want to prove to yourself that you don't possess the sort of, you know, energy it takes to be neglectful or to not do mm -hmm. it. And it's like, despite who you were or what you did to me or how things went down, like I'm doing the right thing. Because Can I suggest I'm better than that. reading Dave Sedaris's Carnival of Snackery? Like he, it's a series of essays from his journals and he talks about taking care of his elderly father who was uh, abusive to him mm. um, by being, you know, he was a gay man in the, you know, David Sedaris is a gay man in the South. His father was very homophobic. Um, but towards the end of his life, he still did visit, take care of his father. And um, they were able in a lot of ways to heal their relationship. Were they? Yeah. And okay. I think. Um, mm. I think a lot of times you don't want people to die without you, uh, with you abandoning every possible way of reconciling. Mm. You know, like some, it doesn't feel fair because it feels like it should be on your parents. They're the ones who made you. It's their responsibility. But I mean, life, man. I'm trying to think of that. I think I've mentioned this on uh, the show before. Let me make sure I'm getting it right. 
there's a film called Waves. Mm -hmm. um, it's a psychological drama written and produced by Trey Edward Schultz. And um, it was really good. It kind of touched in on this too. It was a lot. It was a lot of, it was a lot going on, but there was a point in the movie where like this uh, kid, his dad had abandoned him. And this was a second door, secondary, tri ter tertiary, tertiary? Sure, third. Third, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, kind of side plot or whatever, but the one of the main character's boyfriends, um, his parent, I think his dad was never there for him. And he was sick. And then I, somebody called him and was like, he's basically dying and stuff. And so she ends up taking this road trip to go visit him. And he didn't want to at first, though. But she encouraged him to. And he was so grateful because I, mean, I think it's hard to sell that. Like, Because on one hand, I totally understand being like double middle fingers to you, sir, forever and ever. Because that's the energy I got. It's the same thing of being like, if you're going to come at me for my eyelashes, bitch, I'm coming back for you. Because guess what? With alliteration. You can get it. Yeah, you can get it, too. And so... You have to understand that, that 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 energy exists in the world. Like if you fail the people around you or you're putting out shitty energy, it's nothing but karmic retribution yeah. when that comes back to you. Um, but the elevated sense of that same thing is when you can put yourself in a place where you can put that to the side and allow for like some yeah. some healing, healing, real or, healing or being like Michelle Obama and Man, going go high higher or whatever. When they go low. Jeez. It's not as satisfying in the moment, it's but in the not. long run, it's way more satisfying. It's the long game. And so, so yeah, take, it's hard not to. I look. hope you take our advice, assholes. Yeah, so do that, guys. <laughs> Man, what a great way to end the it show, was. friend. Wait, that do we really, want to, really are we going to spin the wheel? We're definitely going to uh, spin the wheel, friend. Yeah, that was great. So spin it. All right. All right. Yay, a Yay. book. A book, guys. Look a real us. book. A for real We've, book. Huh. Listen, we're not, listen, we're doing our best. All right. We're going to be reading The Other Significant Others by Raina Cohen. Yay. So, so cool. Tell us, tell the people how we came to this. Cause uh, what now? Uh, Trevor Noah's podcast. He was interviewing the author yes. and it just sounded so great because Noah or Trevor Noah, he's single. And so all of his friends are always trying to get him to get married. So he brought on this author to be like, look, you can still have a good life if you're single. Like, And you still have to have other significant others like um, I, I really love the talk and stuff because maybe because I'm single and it helped to vindicate my <laughs> and I'm married and I love having other significant others. I feel like I, you know, it makes your life more full to have, you know, a buffet of interpersonal relationships to pull from because, you know, like even if you eat steak every night, it's like every once in a while I want some salmon. We just talk yeah, about fighting a beer, beer for, for, for it. Beer for salad, anything. So, like there's. Yeah, we need that village, we basically. Do. So I'm excited to read it because um, I think it'll help. I think we we were talking about this on um, with Chris Mangle. He was talking about how podcasts can be a great way to form community because mm -hmm. there is so much isolation out there. And people are lonely, And man. people need community. Yeah. So um, just that reminder that you're not crazy if you need, like, more than just one significant other. And it doesn't have to be like romance. Like it, it can be just like, oh, hey, maybe we should open a taco truck. You know, whatever together. it is. Like together. <laughs> like yeah. Sometimes chemistry doesn't just have to be romantic. So it does you not. still you still have to feel that energy and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm excited to get into that. Me too. And that's why I still have hope for you to find a photonic male friend. We'll see. Okay. Anywho. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Come back next week. And um, Kat, what do you always tell the folks around this time? Your body belongs to you. So, so true, friend. But try so, not so to true. use it for racism. Yeah. If at all possible. Just try. If at all possible. And also, guys, it's this or nothing. So enjoy your life. Um, tap into the people and things that you love because this is life. <laughs> so see you next time, guys. Peace. Before we go, we must give thanks Thank to you. Urban Nerd for providing our music. And legal services were handled by Trazen A. M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake-ass book club. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the Fake Ass Book Club. We out. <laughs>